Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, so happy holidays, everyone. I have a very appropriately themed holiday painting today. It's so cute. It's going to be a festive little holiday snow globe. We're using a slightly larger but rectangular canvas here, any canvas. Uh, or canvas board that is this kind of uh, shape here works just fine. I'm going to be using four brushes as well for today's painting. So I have my big square brush, I have a medium sized pointed brush, and then I have two of my little trusty detail brushes. So a small one and an even smaller one. I'm going to get those in the water cup off the side of the screen. I'm going to be starting with just three colors today for the background step, which is just going to be white, black, and red. I'm going to do my background here with red. Just keep in mind it's totally customizable too. So if you'd like to do green or purple or whatever color you want, that's going to be like the wall here. But I thought a red wall would be very festive uh, for the season. So if you'd like to see a complete materials list of everything that you need to paint along, go ahead and check the description box below. Let's go ahead and jump into our background step. All right, so I'm going to grab my medium-sized brush first, and I'm going to create a horizon line here for our painting. So I'm going to grab a little bit of gray, a little bit of water always helps the acrylic paint go nice and smooth. So I'm mixing a little bit of water in there. And then I'm going to come up about a third of the way, and I'm just going to create a horizontal line. Go over it a couple times, try to make it as straight as possible. All right, and that's going to just be a separation here of our top section and our bottom section. Now I'm going to start up top. I'm going to grab my big brush for this. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of a dark red. So just a tiny pinch of black in there, as you can see, goes a long way to a gorgeous maroon red Christmassy, holly berry color, very pretty, matches my nails. <laughs> and a little bit of water, again, always. And now we're going to take this color and we're just going to start applying it into the top two thirds section here and come down to that line of separation. And we're doing up and down brush strokes here. And as we work our way across, we're going to have some areas where we're going to go a little bit darker with the red and then some areas where we're going to go a little bit lighter. And rather than going all the way across my canvas with the red first and then coming back and adding areas of light and dark, I'm going to go ahead and kind of do that as I go. Since I'm working with a pretty large canvas today and acrylic paint dries pretty quickly, I'm not going to trust that it'll be blendable in just a few seconds here. So <laughs> uh, once you have a little section of red, you can take some more of the dark red here and add a couple streaks in. All right, so we're just creating like, a, like some sort of wall behind here that has some sort of effect on it. Maybe a antiquing, a sponge brushing, a decorative dining room wall. I don't know, my imagination is going crazy. <laughs> so a little bit of variation there, as you can see. And then we're just gonna grab again, just like the brighter red and work our way across. Loving that color today. Red, just for me, feels very cheerful so saturated. I just think it's so pretty. All right, and little brush strokes here at the bottom, but then smooth, long brush strokes to get that nice, smooth look here. We're working our way from the background to the foreground and from the top 
to the bottom. Okay, one last little section here. All right. And we can add a little bit of some light red into this too, I'm thinking, but it's gonna blend to pink. So depending on how you feel about that, I like to do a darker color for the background for this one because we're gonna have our snow globe, which is going to be white. So it's nice to have a nice like amount of contrast between the dark of the background and the white of the snow globe. I tried this with a few different background colors. Love to see what everyone's coming up with this time of year. And if you're painting along, I would love to see your work. And I have created a Facebook group called The Art Club that is specifically designed for my students to share their work, whether it be from painting along with me during the tutorials or just from your own studio, whatever you're creating. I would love to see it. Check out the description box below for a link to join that. A little bit of dark red in there too. That might be too dark. But I do like the contrast. I think a little bit of dark red, it's not so bad. All right, just kind of mixing it up. And I'm just gonna bring that a few more places. And then yeah, we can grab a little bit of white too if we want. And then to do a couple white areas, just so it's not all one solid color. That's a little bit of interest. Okay, it looks great. I'm gonna rinse my brush completely with all of the red. And it's okay if you have a little bit of pink water, but if you have a lot of pigment in that water, you can even consider getting fresh water because we wanna do a nice gray here. And this is also why we try to sort of keep a straight line here. because we don't wanna pull it too much into our table. We wanna have a pretty clean color here and that is gray. So black and white together using that same big brush. And now I'm going to be doing back and forth brush strokes. Okay, so we had our up and down before, now we're doing back and forth, but we still wanna have a little bit of water. Getting it all nice and filled in with this first layer and then you'll be moving up towards your line of separation to meet that line and cover that line with your gray paint so that we have two nice clean sections here. Okay. Working with a big canvas today, giving my arm a workout. <laughs> All right, back and forth. And I have a little bit of variation in this gray area too. So this is like a table, okay? Any sort of side table or dining room table. And so a little bit of variation in there. Maybe it's a marble. And I'm going to wait till the last minute to do a nice clean line there because I don't want to pull that red down into my gray. A little bit of darker gray here. Just a little bit of interest. A couple different places. Perfect. Just how I want it. All right. Looks good. I think I might even take my medium sized brush here for just a little bit more control to get a nice straight line. I'm gonna go a little bit darker. I'm just gonna come right up here and come into the red a little bit and wipe off 
after each brush stroke so that I don't pull the red too much down into my gray. Okay, nice clean line there. As straight as we can make it. Just like so. And then I'm going to just take a kind of an in-between gray here and bring that right next to it to kind of smooth it out there into the rest of the table. So I have a pretty clean line here. It's not the straightest. <laughs> I'm going to try to finesse it a little bit. Okay, that looks good enough. Let's go ahead and let this layer dry and then we're gonna come back and add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background and fresh colors on my piece of palette paper here. So I have a fair amount of white, gonna have a lot of white for our lovely little snow elements. A little bit of green, some warm burnt sienna type brown, a little bit of black, and then just a tiny little pinch of yellow. I have uh, from my kitchen a pot lid. Um, so this is what I'm going to be using to create my circular shape for my snow globe. Now you can use a pot lid as well, or you could use like a small plate uh, or a bowl or something like that. I'm going to grab my second to smallest brush here. I'm going to place my pot lid <laughs> uh, pretty much dead center and you want to have it overlapping your table part a little bit so that we can have our little base here. Uh, just kind of eyeballing it. Uh, looks good. And then I'm going to take some white and I'm just very gently going to go around that circular shape a couple times just with that white paint. Hopefully just giving me a very light outline. Let's see what we got here. Pretty good. In some areas, I'm just going to come back and kind of touch up a little bit. Put it back. No, <laughs> I gotta go with it. All right, I'm just gonna refine this circle a little bit before we move on. It's just not quite as circular as I wanted it to be. Just wanna get that shape refined before we really go crazy inside of the snow globe. And I'm not going to come back and go over it again and again and again and try to get the perfectly circular line as much as I'm just kind of trying to find that shape. There we go. It's looking pretty good. I use the pot lid and it's still not that circular. <laughs> okay, that's all right. It's hand painted, it's gotta have that rustic handmade look. Okay, that's fine, that's plenty circular. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna grab a little bit of brown. I'm gonna mix in just a tiny pinch of white and I'm going to do the base. So the base is gonna come out from either side here, like so. You want it to be at about the same height. Gonna have two little brush strokes coming out like so, and then a curved bottom as well. This is gonna be a circular bottom, so we're gonna have a nice swoop here to meet the other side. Okay, let's go ahead now and fill in that base with that brown color. Still using that second to smallest detail brush. And we don't wanna go into our circle. Okay, so same sort of parallel curve here. This part here is also circular, so we're gonna have that same degree of circularness, <laughs> if you can see what I'm saying here. And we're gonna keep those brush strokes going along that shape. 
All right, all those brush strokes in a consistent direction. Every brush stroke matters. I say that in almost every class because it's true. You want to have everything going that consistent direction, like so. Fill it in with that light sort of medium brown. And I'm going to grab a little bit of a dark brown. So it's just going to be a little bit of black into that burnt sienna. And just right here at the bottom, I'm going to do a quick shadow. I'm going to do a few brush strokes here throughout as well to kind of give it that almost like scalloped, I'm not sure what the word is for that, but like textured wood base here, something like that. And then since we're down here, let's see, I've rinsed my brush really quick and I'm going to create a quick shadow just where the base touches our table. I'm just using like a medium gray there, a little bit of black and white together. I'm just going to bring that brush stroke right up to my base here, just a little bit with a darker gray. Like so. Pretty subtle. You don't want to go too dark with your shadow here. Have a nice clean line where they meet. Just like so. Okay. Easy. All right. Now I'm going to go up into my snow globe area with that same brush, but I rinsed it. And I'm going to go maybe a little bit less than halfway up. And I'm going to create a curvy line. And then I'm going to fill this whole section in here with white. And to speed things up, I'm going to use my medium sized brush for the filling in. If you ever feel like you need a little bit more control when we're working in these small shapes, feel free to always downgrade brush sizes. And then on the flip side of the spectrum there, if you feel like things are going too slowly, then go ahead and get a larger brush. So I'm using my medium sized brush here right now. We again want to get all of those brush strokes going in that same direction, okay? So I'm kind of doing gentle curved lines here with my brush to get that snow look. So cute. We want to have as circular of a line as we can. About like so, being careful not to pull the beige into the white. Okay. Circular as possible. Up to where the snow stops, just like so. Okay, looks good. Now, I'm going to grab, I'm just going to use my second to smallest size brush again. I feel really comfortable with this brush. I am a fan of it. And I'm going to grab that same beige, sort of beige-ish beige -ish brown here that I added a little bit of black and white to. And I'm going to create my little cabin about right here. So I'm going to do a little rectangle like so, kind of more squarish, I suppose. Like so. And I'm just going to then fill that in. And actually, let's go ahead and grab, before you fill it in all the way, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I want to take a little bit of white and I'm going to do a rectangle in the center part here, and that's going to be our window. We are gonna do that with yellow in just a minute. 
But rather than putting the yellow on top of the red or the brown, which I feel like is gonna probably make like an orange color, I'm just gonna block out where I want this window to be with white. And then I'm going to continue my filling in. It wouldn't have been the end of the world if we wanted to put that white on top of the brown, but I thought, let's go ahead and save a step here. So I'm just going to fill that in now around my white rectangle for my cute little window. Okay, very nice. And we're going to need now a little roof to add a little bit more white here. So just a little triangle shape right on top. Just like so. Very cute. And that's just going to be two little lines like that. I think I'll take a little bit more of my warm brown and just come into that little triangular area that I've made. So the log cabin part goes all the way up and then you have your roof. So this whole bottom section here, we're gonna have these back and forth brush strokes. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of black even. I'm going to go up here underneath our roof and just do a quick shadow there. And then I'm going to do some back and forth brush strokes kind of throughout my little cabin shape. Like so to sort of start to create the look of the logs. Okay. That'll look a little bit neater in just a minute. Let's go ahead and grab a little bit of that light beige as well that we had in the roof color. I'm going to do some little stripes in the log cabin area with that light color as well. Don't want to go too heavy handed because you want to see a little bit of that brown color still as well. So just a few little brush strokes. So cute. All right, let's go ahead and do a big tree now. We're kind of jumping around inside of our snow globe. Um, but we wanna let that cabin area dry for just a second before we come back and finish up the details. So I have a green that I mix with just a little bit of white. And right next to my cute little cabin, I'm going to do a tree. I'm just going to kind of flick my wrist all the way down like so into the white snow part. I'm just going to have very delicate little flicks of the wrist out in either direction. All right. Just like so. So cute. And then I'm going to do one more tree right next door. Such a cute little imaginary parcel of land that we have inside of our world. You can put as many trees as you like as well. Just keep that in mind. You don't have to do two, but I thought that the two with the little cabin was just, just the right amount. Okay, very nice. And then we're going to add some highlights and shadows inside of the trees as well. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of black and I'm going to make a noticeably darker green. But not too dark, we don't wanna go all the way to black. We still wanna have some of that forest kind of vibrance of the green there. I'm just going to do a few little brush strokes all throughout that tree to break it up. Make it not one solid shape. Give it some depth. Less is more of that step. Okay, let's give that a second because I want to add some snow in just a minute, but I'd like for that to dry first that our snow doesn't turn green. <laughs> so let's go back into our little cabin. I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow and mix it in with my white. Create a nice bright yellow and 
Hopefully your white is mostly dry inside of there. And now you can just add that yellow right on top to create a nice cozy glow inside of our adorable little cabin. Okay, that still needs a second to dry. So I'm gonna go back around my globe for a bit. And here is the time where you wanna have as refined of a circle as you can get. So I'm just gonna kinda of touch up that outside edge first in a few places. And that sort of scruffy texture from the initial sketch is actually going to serve us well in a step that's happening in just a minute. So don't worry if it's a little bit imperfect, a little bit sketchy. Nice clean line on the outside of that circle though. As much as possible. <laughs> you don't want to bring any one area out too much either because it all has to be, you know, in line. So I'm going to go back into the base really quick. I'm going to add a nice bright highlight with a very light beige just to kind of accentuate the center part like so. Okay, and I think I'd like to go back inside now. A little bit of a very dark brown. And ooh, let's go ahead and use our smallest brush for this. A few more details onto the house, just kind of bouncing around, letting things dry. Very, very dark brown here. Pretty much all the way to black. And I'm just going to outline this one side of the house so that it doesn't get lost in the background. Just like so. Very nice. And with that same tiny brush, I'm going to take a little bit of gray. So black and white together. I'm going to create a little chimney you'd have to have a wood-fired stove, of course. Nice little chimney there, just a rectangular shape, really simple. And I think it's almost dry enough to add some snow to our roof. So I'm still giving those trees just another half second. But the top part of my house looks like it could use a little bit of snow now. So just gonna create a little bit of a kind of a curved shape up and down like so. Very natural, similar to the sort of curvy shape that we did at the bottom part for our snow. And just a little bit of collected snow right there next to the chimney and same like so on the other side. Okay, I'm gonna do a little highlight in the chimney as well, just to give it a little bit of definition. And I think I'll go ahead and take this really light beige into my roof as well. Just like so, it's a little bit too light. I don't want it to look like the snow itself, but a little bit of definition there, a little bit of highlight. Okay, and then back in my window, Going to take a little bit of black. We're on the home stretch here, everyone. And right around that window, I'm just going to create a shadow. Just kind of outlining that rectangular shape. Like so. Everything's still a little wet, so be very careful. Just like so. And then a little cross or a little plus sign right in the center for the different sections of the window. So cute. Now I'm gonna add a little whimsical element with gray, uh, which is going to be smoke coming from the chimney. So obviously if you're trying to paint a realistic snow globe, you might not wanna put smoke from the chimney, but I wanted to do like a you know, like a Disney Christmas, like magic moment, like there's Lens Alive in there. <laughs> I don't even know what movie that's from. It's from like the Santa Claus or something. <laughs> um, but that's a, 
<laughs> my 80s baby there. So a little bit of light gray here. This is an optional step. And I'm going to do a little, little curved bit of smoke here coming from the top. So cute. I was a fun leave it like that. And usually I do a few curls. And that curl was so cute that I kind of just want to leave it like that. Okay, and then in my snow, I'm going to take a little bit of light gray and I'm going to add just a few little brush strokes all around and like around my tree area just to create a little bit of depth in that snow. Really simple. All right. Like so, tapering off. Okay. Just a little texture. Okay, I'm gonna grab now my medium sized brush. This is an important step. I'm still giving those trees a half minute to dry, although I see that they're about half dry. So I should be able to go back there in just a minute. But what we want to do, okay, so this is for the shine on the circle on our globe here. And I think that that really makes the painting. It's very important. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have my medium sized brush here and I rinsed it completely. And I'm going to kind of smoosh it flat so that it fans out a little bit. And I'm just going to take some white that's really dry with no water, like so. And I might even dry my brush off a little bit. And so I should have that kind of fuzzy texture. And I'm going to do a few brush strokes here coming from either side. That looks good. I like it. Right along the outside edge. And then a little bit here in the center. Very nice. I like it. Oh, I want a little bit longer, yeah. Maybe a little bit more of a bold one down here. Okay. Less is more, just a few brush strokes here and there. Okay, and then final little step here. I'm gonna grab my tiny brush, very small detail brush, and I'm just gonna add some snow onto my trees. So simple, what a cute, fun little painting. Perfect for families, perfect for Christmas time or whatever holiday you celebrate. I would love to see everyone over in the art club, so don't forget to join that. Okay, and then our final piece of the resistance step is going to be so cute. It's my favorite. Just going to just be the snow. And I'm going to switch back to my second to smallest brush here, but I'm actually going to use the end of my brush. So whatever has a nice little circle there for you is what you're going to want to use here. I'm just going to do a little snow flurry of snowflakes all throughout the inside there of my adorable snow globe and you'd have some overlapping your little cabin and just like maybe the snow is settled or maybe it's a furious snow globe shake you get to decide you right on top of my trees as well and there we have it look at how cute and that is all the instruction that we have for this week's tutorial. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. Would love to hear from you. Love to see you over in the art club. And if you like this painting, make sure and hit like. Until next time, happy holidays and stay creative.